Hello ladies and gentlemen, and today we're going to look at literal equations, which you're going to want to have on you today. You're going to want to have your notebook, a writing utensil, and you may need a calculator, but mm, probably not likely. Your learning goals. I can solve literal equations for a given variable using inverse operations. You're probably saying, well, Miss Marsh, what is a literal equation? So a literal equation is an equation with more than one variable. Basically, you've seen these before. You've seen them last year when you guys looked at area and when you looked at volume and also when you've messed with the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You see it a lot in physical science. You see it if you go into chemistry in 11th grade, you'll see a lot of formulas there that you have to rearrange to solve for a variable. So what we're going to look at is how to rearrange a literal equation to solve for a variable that we want. So let's try this example. I have solve for r. c equals 2 pi r. The circumference of a circle, right? That's what we're solving for. I want r. I want to solve for r right here. So what I need to do is I need to get r alone. So basically, I need to get rid of this 2 pi garbage sitting out there, right? Well, right now I have 2 times pi times r. So I have to undo that multiplication. Well, I'm just going to divide by 2. So I'll count, that'll divide my 2, right? Why can't I just divide by pi as well? Right? I can just divide by pi. So then 2 pi over 2 pi is just 1 r. And then I have this c over 2 pi hanging out over here. Well, that means r equals c divided by 2 pi, which is my answer. So all I needed to do was get r alone. Sometimes the equation that you make is probably not going to look as nice. That's OK, though, as long as you solve for the variable I asked for. Let's take a look at another example. I have y equals 3 fourths x plus b. And I want to solve for x. So I need x all alone. What we got to do, we got to get rid of the other stuff. So this 3 fourths and this plus b. So plus b, think of that as a number. So if I had 3 fourths x plus 2 and I needed to solve for x, well, we would have subtracted the 2, right? So let's subtract b from both sides. Because remember, you're going to go sad maps, PEMDAS backwards. So y minus b equals 3 fourths x. Because those b's are going to cancel out, right? Well, I got to get x alone yet. So I would divide by 3 fourths. But dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Now, I'm multiplying this entire side by 4 thirds. Make sure there goes some parentheses around that. Because I'm multiplying the entire side, not just a piece, but the entire side. So then 3 fourths and 4 thirds cancel each other out, left with 1. And then I can distribute this 4 thirds in. So I would have 4 thirds y minus 4 thirds b. I solve for x. That's my final answer. <clears throat> now let's try solving for y. So I have 8x plus 3y equals 48. So I need y alone. So I'm going to circle y here. So I kind of pay attention. That's the guy I need. Well, 8x is just hanging out there, right? He has nothing to do with y. So let's subtract him away. Let's get him to the other side. Cancel out there. I'm going to leave with 3y. I'm going to have negative 8x plus 48, because those aren't like terms, right? Um, we still need y alone, though. So let's divide by that 3. So I'm going to get y equals negative 8x over 3. I'm going to put that 3 with that one. And I'm also going to divide it by the 48 as well, because it's 3 divided by both of those, right? Well, negative 8 over 3, that doesn't sim simplify down at all. So we'll just leave it like that. 
But 48 divided by 3, I'm pretty sure that simplifies down. 48 divided by 3, quickly do that on my calculator. That's 16. So negative 8 thirds x plus 16 is my final answer. Always make sure when you divide that you check to make sure nothing does cancel away or simplify down. Let's solve for r. So I have p equals 2 pi r plus 2x. So let's first, I want to solve for r. So I'm going to circle r here so I kind of pay attention that's what I want. So this plus 2x is kind of baggage on that right-hand side. Oops. So let's subtract 2x from both sides. Cancel out. So I'm going to be left with 2 pi r over here. P minus 2x over there as well. Uh, I still need r alone, right? So kind of like what we did at the beginning when we had c equals 2 pi r, I need, those are multiplications. So let's divide by 2 pi. So I'm going to get r equals p minus 2x over 2 pi. Now, this can be separated out. So let's put that 2 pi on the, on the, under both of those on the numerator. So I've got p over 2 pi minus 2x over 2 pi. So notice, though, these are going to cancel out. So p over 2 pi minus x over pi. Those are. Now, do these look, which one looks probably easier? I think it's this one. Now, you can leave it like this. I'll be okay with that. Or you can give me this. Whichever one works better. This one you'll probably see more often in an answer for like a textbook or even if you grow, as you continue in your math career, you'll probably see this more commonly. However, this is also acceptable. It's that this one cancels down. That's the only reason I showed you that. Let's try this last example here. So I have AB plus 8 divided by 12 equals C. So I need to solve for C, or solve for A, excuse me. So here's my A. Let's have a division bar. Now remember, when we had the division bar, we had to multiply first. So let's multiply by 12 first on both sides. Cancels out. So I'm going to be AB plus 8 equals 12 C, so 12 times C. I'm still solving for A. Don't forget about that. So this 8's kind of tagging along, so let's subtract that 8. AB equals 12C minus 8. Still need just A, so that's A times B. So let's divide by B on both sides. And I'm done. Now, this is a good answer because I can't really divide out anything. You could do this, though, if you feel obligated to. Either of these two are perfect answers for this problem. And that's the end of this video. See you later, Sabres.